Hi, Jeff here. I'm back at the Green and the Desert site in Jordan in the Dead Sea Valley. And um, it's springtime, which is a beautiful time of year in deserts because you've got the green herbaceous layer still lush from the winter rain. And you've got the deciduous trees putting their leaves back on, so you're kind of green at the top as well as green at the bottom. It's just a few weeks when there's this overlap. It won't be long before the temperatures rise as we go into summer. Most of the herbaceous layer is going to burn off. But right now, it looks lush, it looks beautiful. There's a lot of flowers, like this beautiful aloe flower next to me. And the birds are going crazy. Springtime nesting time. And there's fruit on. There's mulberry. We've got a beautiful pink chatoot mulberry here flowering, uh, fruiting, shall I say. And uh, the olives are, are flowering. The date palms are flowering. Guavas are on. Citrus are on. And um, it's just an exquisite snapshot at this time of year. It's also a beautiful time of day. It's early morning. And... Um, the sun's rising on the Jordanian highlands to our east. And um, it's going to come over that range and give us some beautiful light for a, an hour or two. A nice golden light. Uh, so it's a great snapshot in time of day and year. And I'd just like to take you for a sort of exquisite little tour and show you some of the beauty of the place because this is special. The date pines have been pruned, actually, so they look really neat. Right? The trunks have been pruned of old fronds, and they're looking smart. And, um, our chop and drop legumes that we cut in September in the autumn, when it was really hot and dry, they've regrown. There's some great regrowth. They're putting the uh, shade on for summer, which is their function, as well as fixing nitrogen, reduce evaporation. I've got all kinds of things to show you here over the next three weeks. The natural swimming pools, plant systems established over winter. It's looking good. And we have new buildings. We have a new building. We've renovated over the old shower toilet block into a two-story mud brick walled accommodation building. It's still being built, but it's a, we can have a good look at it. And. Um, there's all kinds of new gardens and new trellises and lots of things to show you. And, and over the next three weeks, it'll probably start to dry off here a bit. So I'll show you a comparison, hopefully. And after that, I go to Hungary to do some more work uh, with one of our team members. Oh, we have a Bedouin tent as well. We have a new block of land uh, for one of our families here. We're moving in very close to us, just a few houses away. Another permaculture establishment. And then we've put up a, a traditional Bedouin tent, goat hair Bedouin tent. And we're going to hold traditional Bedouin meals there for visitors. So lots of exciting things. But right now, let me take for you for this uh, tour of in intimacy. Sea Purse Lane. What a fantastic ground cover this is. And it's edible. It really is a beautiful, fine gel plant. Chatoot mulberry and a pink chatoot, which is just beautiful. Such a tasty mulberry. So sweet. Every year we're getting a few more fruit. Um, I love the mulberries. And it's nothing better than a chatoot. And being pink, it's even pretty. Got a few different aloes here. And they're all beautiful when they're flowering. Is one of our smartened up date palms, de-suckered and 
fronds trim looking really smart You've got to get up into the canopy and above Lucina regrowth in just six months all that mass has gone on this is at the bottom of the site it's a very fertile position but still that's enormous amounts of fast carbon pathway organic material going to give us a lot of shade over summer nice ground covers everywhere with purslane stretching out onto the sandstone doing a fantastic job and more leukina putting on mass right next to two sub pods in grand worm farms in the garden acting as seats starting to grow a nice papaya the one and only Tipuana Tipu on site, one of my favourite legumes in the subtropics. It's a little bit stressed here, but it's still working. And a beautiful date palm. Just starting to put out flowers there. And we've mulched the date palm prunings all around the drip line here. And here, this is an albizia the beck, one of my great long-term legumes. In full seed, just put its leaves back on as we move towards spring temperatures. And a key apple from South Africa. Nice, unusual little fruit. A bit spiky, but nice fruit. Pomegranate, just starting to put extra leaves on for spring. Olives flowering right around the site. Probably going to be a good olive here. Cotton, there's a few cotton bushes around the site. They're like cotton wool. Marshmallow plant is one of the favorite greens wild greens of Jordan, they call it Hobesa and they love their marshmallow plant. A lot of places in the world it's just sprayed weed. Here they just let it grow through the gardens. We've got a fantastic crop of tomatoes here where there was a chicken pen. There's now tomatoes, fennel, eggplant, celery, all growing rampantly here in the old chicken pen zone. There's some good eggplant on here. And then we've harvested kilos of tomatoes since we've arrived. So it's uh, going to just get better and better as we improve the old chicken pen soil where there was a lot of compost made. There's tomatoes lying everywhere on the ground. More than we can eat. The old chicken pen is a garden, but the old chicken house is a carpentry workshop. So we now have a craft workshop to train young men how to recycle brick pallets and make furniture. And there seems to be endless building, but we'll get finished one day. Carob. Some nice carobs on site. A 
And here's a top fence and a whole row of citrus doing really well with Singapore Daisy as a grand cover. Singapore Daisy and Sea Purse Lane are our main grand covers, perennial. And here's a date palm. It's got its flowers bagged. We're about to specifically pollinate with the right pollen, male pollen. Doing really well. It's got a lot of flowers up there. And also, it's had a beautiful prune. Trunk's looking very smart. Back up the top footpath. Everything's so green at this time of year. Inside the, the walls of the site doesn't really look like a desert at first glance. Looking is all pulling on plenty of growth, even up at the top of the site where we've got less water. And here's a quick peek at our new building where there was a shower toilet block. There's now mud brick. You can see the mud bricks at the top infill and you can see the render at the bottom. And there's three bedrooms, each with showers and toilets on each floor. Another date palm and we've got a really neat mulching job of the uh, trimmings around the base. Lovely. So I have a new vantage point now. I'm on top of the new accommodation building. And I'm almost as high as the rock behind us where I used to take most of my shots over the site. But this gives you a good idea of what the landscape was like when we started. And now I can swing around and look down on the food forest. There's our new building next door, straw bale mud brick. Here's the irrigated agriculture of the valley below us. And in the distance, right over there, is Jericho, the lowest capital city in the world on the Palestinian West Bank. And here's our food forest below us. And we're higher than the restaurant building. We can look down on the canopy. I'll do a tour of this new building later. One by one, I'll tour different sites, parts of the site. So this is a unique view that I've not been able to do before, looking straight down on the system. And you can see the density of the canopy. This has always been one of my favorite little pathways coming down from what was a shower toilet block is now accommodation building. And we've got shade from the wall on the roadside. Now it's a little bit more lush just on this side, especially at this time of year. There's guava and Brazil cherry in there, which is quite unique. And uh, we've got an overhanging pomegranate that's been pulled back so builders can get past building the new building and uh, hibiscus tiliaceus which is a neutral tree that produces a lot of mulch and as you can see the new building actually has verandas four verandas on the food forest side that hang into the food forest and you can see the mud brick there 
and you can see the render down the bottom. Future tour, but very beautiful. It's going to be lovely to stay there with the verandas into the food forest. Pomegranate and neem there going quite well. And uh, I'll busy a little back in the overstory. Back down to the lower layer. Ladies love their roses, so they're growing roses in pots here and doing okay. We get a few flowers. Now coming down to the wicking beds. Salon spinach is climbing everywhere. I picked a salad out of here for last night and this morning. Tomatoes, capsicum, chilies, parsley, celery, a little bit of melon, eggplant, there's even a bit of lemongrass growing in here, some onions, lettuce gone to seed, it's probably going to be replanted again pretty soon, green celery here going quite rampant, good to see, and then we go on to the new oasis site which joins us. A straw bell mud brick house is functioning well and uh, I can hear some students working in, in, in the food forest early morning but we've paved the driveway and we've got the runoff going into the food forest below and we've trellised above and the grapes are on the way there's grape and passion fruit planted already to take over and shade the sandstone. So we've got grapes in position. Coming up towards the wire. From down there. And it won't be long. And this will just be a green canopy of grapevines. Every single post just about. It's got a grape on the way. So this is going to be a gorgeous thing. And down here, I can hear them clipping and clacking in some kind of tools. Look, there. Permaculture students cutting mulch, it looks like and a reed bed in the foreground that's going to be worked on. But this site had fruit trees and hardly any support. So we're putting in legume trees. Here's a Sesbania sesbans, a rapid little tree. And the citrus is on. There's citrus fruit everywhere. And they've dug a micro swale off the reed bed. It's all being adjusted, nothing's perfect yet, but it's working. And we've pruned the citrus, which was brutally pruned. We've pruned with a little bit more finesse. Massive amounts of my mallow plant, taking up a herbal position at the moment. We've got aloe vera planted and we've got Singapore daisy planted. Even we can see some broad beans here planting. And this has all been managed really well. The next garden down is lush. So cloths pulled back. Garden after garden. Going down through the landscape. It's just more and more application of our systems. Our bees hives are thriving. I had to add extra supers. So they've all come to life. I 
and we're working this area up to be more of an integrated food forest with its own supply line of mulch system support species. This mulberry's doing really well after a good prune in September and it's just getting its leaves back on now. So this is a standard mulberry, not a chatout. And here's a guava doing well. There's a few larger guavas here. And they're starting to set fruit. Olive. There's a few guavas there. And right behind me are two custard apples. They're looking stressed because it was a bit of a cool winter for here. But there is some fruit and we're going to get them performing, I think. Now, there's some custard apples and fruit and that's a great thing because they're very subtropical. Another guava. Beautiful blue bird here. Oh, almost like a hummingbird. Over there on the citrus. Gorgeous. What a beautiful little moment that was. Wow. And then in here. There's a volunteer jujube just here, but here's a reasonable size jujube. This is Chinese raisin, a zizophus. I'm just getting this leaves back on in the springtime. There's really birds everywhere, all around me. <laughs> Stands to reason they're attracted to the site. Here's our little blue bird again. Hopefully, he stays in my company. Definitely not going to be short of citrus. That's for sure. And that's the new wall around the natural swimming pool, which uh, has been well dressed up since we last were here in September. And now we have a shaded area. Just a quick peek for you. And there's our shower and toilet on the other side. We'll get back to that on another film. Here we are, right at the back of the oasis block, merging into the green in the desert. I love that moment with a little blue bird, almost like a hummingbird there. Some of our pigeons are flying up in the sky, having an early morning fly round. Just catching a bit of sun up at, up at that height. And uh, it's been fun showing you around. There's more to come. There's lots to show you. I'm going <laughs> to enjoy taking you for more things around, showing you more things that are happening and giving you some hope that uh, we can have a very sustainable world. If you can do it here, you can more or less do it anyway.